Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Adventure in a Backpack. Well, we're in Oklahoma and it's tornado season and storms are brewing outside. Typically when we're not here during tornado season, we are traveling around in our custom DIY camper van, not chasing storms, having as many adventures as possible. So if that sounds like your kind of adventure and not storms, be sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell. We're gonna show you what goes on whenever storms are approaching. So Steph and I both grew up in Oklahoma. So these days aren't foreign to us totally. That doesn't make them like fine. Like it still sucks when you have to like take all those preparations around the weather, but it is what it is and we're here. So um, we are here in Oklahoma uh, doing some general maintenance to our van. And so that's why we're here. It seems like we're always here during tornado season though, because it's in the middle of mud season in the mountains. But that being said, we're here anyway, and I'm outside right now, it's not raining. Um, so whenever storms are going on, it's not always like super nasty, like over the entire state. Uh, the storms are about an hour and a half away, and there's one basically straight west of us that won't hit us. Uh, there's another one that is, um, southwest of us like basically in the corner of Oklahoma in the southwest corner and it's tough to say if that will hit us or not because it's kind of a you know you can never predict exactly where the weather is going to be but uh, that one has a better chance of hitting us here so we're going to go ahead and get ready take our preparations and all that kind of stuff so let's go get that welcome to the tornado shelter so this is out here. If you guys have been following for a while, you'll recognize this particular space. This is actually where we built the van. Uh, and this little room back here is a storm shelter. So it's uh, concrete walls. I'm not sure how thick they are. Probably eight inch thick walls. Uh, fully gridded out with uh, with uh, rebar that goes down into the into the ground uh, that's tied into the, the sandstone that's below this uh, this particular place. And it's about as sturdy as it gets. This door here is got three deadbolts on it. So opens inside, so we didn't, can't get stuck in here. Uh, well, I guess we could get stuck in here if the outside collapsed out here. But that's pretty much it. Got some food, got some water. Uh, that's pretty much all we need. Uh, like worst case scenario, like worst, can, worst comes to worst, and we actually do get something bad that comes through this area. Um, fire departments and rescue, they're pretty quick uh, to respond to these areas. Uh, this uh, the shelter is actually, all the shelters and storm cellars and everything like that are registered. And so if it comes through here and this thing is collapsed, and the, the, if the barn is collapsed around the storm shelter and we can't get out, uh, that's one of the first things that uh, Urban Search and Rescue comes through and they will go through and they check those things. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to go check on Steph. She's making dinner right now and we're going to get dinner. Uh, we've got about an hour 15 or so until the storms are supposed to be coming through. Oh, Okay, so basically I am juggling right now, keeping an eye on these storms and cooking dinner. Um, so we've got the TV on right now on the news, but generally they kind of over sensationalize everything and kind of want to get people hyped up and scared, which really, really sucks. Um, so I prefer to watch um, Aaron Tuttle, which he's not part of a news channel or anything like that. He's got his own thing. I'm just watching him on Facebook Live right now and he's way calmer. So 
definitely helps with the anxiety levels here. So we're really just trying to see if anything is going to form into a storm. There's um, there's four potential areas that could uh, form into a tornado. So right now we're just watching it and seeing if it's going to hit and where it's going to hit. Let's get one of those guys headed back north just to be safe, okay? We said earlier that is going to eat it. That's the one to eat. It's medium. food out? Yep, it's, uh, oh yeah. Do you gotta put... So, tornadoes aren't always the main hazard of these things. High winds, obviously, but also hail. Hail is incredibly dangerous because the tornado is only gonna hit, like, Historically, like even the biggest tornadoes, they'll take out a swath that's a mile wide. I mean, sure, it's total devastation in that mile, but you know, the 35 miles on either side of it is going to get hail that is super, super damaging enough to you know total out a car, anything like that. So, with our van out front, that's like one of my biggest concerns with that because it's like at, it's kind of like losing the lottery, if you will, um, to get hit by a tornado, but the chances of getting hit by big hail um, are are a lot more real. Also, when you're watching the news on TV, <laughs> you also have to be a sports expert as well as a fruit expert because they will always make references to <laughs> it's going to be golf ball size hail or it's going to be ping pong ball, ball size hail. Ping pong, golf ball, ping pong, golf ball, ping pong, golf ball, ping pong, golf ball. I don't know about you, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know which one's big or not. I think my favorite one was they were saying it's a it's grapefruit sized hail. All the food out? Yep, it's, uh, oh yeah. Do you gotta... Yeah, we discussed that. And tell Washington to take a hike. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate... Uh -huh. So we just heard a new one. We're watching the TV, and apparently they're having hail that's the size of hen eggs. And a hen egg size, just north of Lake Chickasha on the tail end of this line down here. So if I hold my finger here, and she goes back to reflectivity, you'll see... What? Uh, hen egg size. Yeah. Big hail. Big hail down here. You know, golf ball size. Hen egg. Hen egg. We're out of hen eggs. Hen egg. Specifically hen eggs. There's hen egg sized hail in, where was that? I have no idea. I was listening to Aaron Tuttle. I don't know. Okfusky County or something like that. Binger. Yeah, Binger. I don't know. Cloud. Like. So that's another thing we just talked about on the vlog about the golf ball size versus ping pong ball sized and tennis ball versus baseball and how you need to Softball know. Softball versus grapefruit. Oh yeah, grapefruit, because you need to be a fruit expert. Mm -hmm. Expert. So apparently you need to know livestock, which we are in Oklahoma. Uh, but then it, gets, then it brings a question, it's like, he specifically mentioned hen egg-sized hail. Like, well, I mean, as opposed to rooster egg? <laughs> like, <laughs> of course it's coming from a hen. <laughs> rooster egg-sized hail. Now, is this like a free-range hen, or is it like organic? Is it gonna be like store-bought? Um, are we talking about small, large, yeah. extra large? Oh, are we yeah. talking about quail eggs? Are we even talking about chickens? Yeah, because hens are like, you can have a, a quail yeah. as a female quail as a hen, right? Yeah, I think any female bird is a hen. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, very, very an confusing. You, you know, I wish. Be an ostrich egg. I wish there was some, some way that we could standardize, like, the size of hail. Like, I don't know, like maybe some those kind of weird like, things like um, called measurements. You know, I don't know. It's like, but then we can't decide if it's like, it's, it's going to be like standard. Are they going to be metric? Because they're like, you know, seven sixteenths inch size hail. <laughs> people are just going to like lose their mind. They're like, I don't know how big this is. Problems. Double yes. Oklahoma problems. Sits. <laughs> All right. That's a good picture, dude. Family time. Family time. Family time. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? The center. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, good news and bad news. Uh, let's talk about the good news. So this is the storm, essentially. Um, so this is all in western Oklahoma, basically. And we are here at this blue dot. So the one that I was initially concerned about was this one up here up top with the red line. And that one is going to go north of us. Uh, tornadoes kind of come down and gone up a time or two. A uh, little bit of damage here and there, but nothing just overwhelmingly crazy. Um, the one that we're worried about now is so when tornadoes form uh, in this area of the state, they have a tendency to basically follow I-44, which is good, basically goes from Lawton to Chickasha to Oklahoma City, which we're not that far off of that one. So those are the ones that kind of concern us. And the one that we're looking at right now is this little one by Frederick, and it's headed right towards Lawton. This specific little hook right down there is the most concerning part. All this other stuff, uh, the purple lines, don't really know what they mean. Not much, probably. Uh, this one random homeboy that's just going straight north, that's kind of weird too, kind of ignoring that one. But good thing is, is this one is definitely going to miss us, uh, not even close. Um, so the bad news. So the bad news. These clouds that are basically right above us at this point are usually indicative of hail. Um, it's kind of like really like fluffy, um, I don't know. It's like a bunch of cotton balls that are still in the bag. Like, they look like that. That means they kind of carry hail. Why that is, don't know, can't explain it, but historically, that's kind of what that does. But anyway, we'll go back inside and check out what Stephanie has found, if anything. And if not, we're probably just gonna watch and check it out. Uh, there was a wall cloud earlier that had slow. Where is that? <laughs> Um, basically everything is dissipating right now, which is fantastic news. Nothing has uh, nothing has formed really into much of a tornado just yet. Um, there have been a few little tiny tornadoes touch down for a couple of minutes and then dissipate, but really all of these storms are starting to fizzle out, so hopefully that holds on. So the direction you're looking right now is basically west-ish. Um, and that's where the storms are kind of coming through. Just seeing a little bit of lightning over there, nothing crazy. But honestly, it's just dissipated to the point where there's not much left. There's another little storm cell like super, super, like quite a ways away that probably won't turn up into being anything uh, this late in the evening. Um, something I did forget to mention earlier in the video was if the electricity goes out, like how do we keep an eye on like what's going on? But over there, that little job right above mom's head is a cell tower, but it's got a tornado siren on it. So I uh, just think back of like, if you watched <laughs> Saving Private Ryan or any of like the old timey war movies and stuff, where you hear like an air raid siren, that's pretty much what it sounds like uh, when that goes off. So it's on a standby generator, all that kind of stuff. They test it every Saturday at noon really loud and that's what that is so hopefully that we won't be able to hear that but anyway lots of lightning over there so okay so we ended up just getting an alert on our phone steph did you get that or i did i think i need to put my shoes on i think you need to put your shoes on it says 8 35 for blanchard which it is what time right now 805 so, so basically it's a tornado on the ground uh, just north of Chickasha, which is driving distance about 25 minutes from here. Um, it's actually going to go north of us just a little bit. Oh, there, there it's back on the, on the radar. Yeah. One second. Basically, if it hits Chickasha, it's likely going to hit Blanchard. So anytime they say that it's in Chickasha or it's close to Chickasha, we really need to be prepared because Chickasha means Blanchard. Yeah, so I'm actually going to rewind it for like 30 seconds to get back to that map. So if you're good with that. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. I've got it on my phone. Okay. So I'm going to rewind it just a little bit. Oh my gosh. So 
So this is what we're looking at right there. That's the actual tornado itself. Uh, we are here-ish. And so it's forecasted to go, you know, in a, in a perfect world scenario, I guess, like an ideal situation or whatever. It's just going to go like that. Going to Bridge Creek, which that's about five miles that way I was talking about earlier um, away from us. But yeah, we're basically like right there. So hopefully it'll miss us. Um, yeah, like I said, alert on my phone just went off and Steph's phone as well. Uh, it's really lightning out there. It's really not even raining very much. It's just barely spitting a little bit. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on it. And the tornado alarms, have the tornado sirens have not gone off yet. Have you showed where they are? Yeah, I showed that earlier. Uh, so yeah, so basically we'll go get in the storm shelter if it gets close. And if it doesn't get close, we'll hang out and watch this. So we'll keep an eye on it. So tornado sirens just started going off and we're going to show you guys where it actually is. So you're going to find the remote. Well, that's the wrong remote. This remote. Okay. So this is... Thanks. You're good. So this is where... Oh, good gosh. This is where the tornado actually is, this green spot in particular. So this is Bridge Creek. This is the one about five miles away. So we are actually right here where good old Hank is. And uh, so actually, I guess we're, we're right there at that intersection, basically. So it's actually north of us by about four miles. So, okay, nope, it's actually headed this way. So we're going to get in the storm shelter. All right, come on, pups. We got our bags. Let's go. Let's go. I know. I know. I know. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Like on the north side of town, you need to go to your safe spot. And it's going to devil. Uh, we need to do a storm track on that, too. Right if we can. There. Is it? Do a storm yep. track on the LA Street Station. Thing. Robin. And then have a door to the northeast. Anything else? Wallet? My bag? I think this is gone there. Stephanie already got it? Yeah, it's like a rear right back there. Okay, so we got into the storm shelter. Here's everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. hey. All parties accounted for. Um, I still think it's going north of us, but like it looked, it, it got really, really windy and started raining pretty hard all of a sudden. It's pretty ugly. Yeah, it got pretty nasty outside. And so um, basically we're like, let's just get in here a little. Proactive. Yeah, you're, yeah being, proactive. you're being proactive about this whole thing. And just so, wise. Um, so about 
I don't know, a quarter mile that way, there's a uh, there's a kind of a strip mall uh, over there that's got a bunch of shops and everything, and super bright lights, and the you could really just see all the rain just really, really wrapping that direction. It was just like totally horizontal, and so that's enough to kind of sketch me out, and so I decided to get in here. Uh, I think Steph has got radar pulled up, so we're going to keep an eye on it in here if she has enough signal. I do have plenty of signal Hopefully, for now. You know, and honestly, like, these things don't last very long. Um, they usually blow over within five minutes, ten minutes, like, mm -hmm. pretty quick usually. Yeah. So we won't be in here very long at all, uh, ideally. So that's that. I'll be worried about a tornado in that situation. With a QLCS type deal, though, and it's free, it's called 18's Weather to Go. No. You can get it on Apple or Google. It'll alert you to those specific locations if there's going to be a... You need to pay, pay attention, because it could be one, and it, if it... Excuse, excuse me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. We just got word that basically uh, it should be over. So, let's leave it open for you guys. Uh, it should be over, but I'm gonna go check it out. Wow, it's raining hard. Holy rip. Okay, no tornado. Unpleasant outside though. Yeah, I don't want to run in the rain if I can get It's really wet out there. I think I'm content right here. Okay, so usually these blow over pretty quick, like I said, and we're going to wait for that and then go inside. Unless you guys want to go inside. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, we're going to wait out of here in the garage. I'm not going to lock the big door though. You guys good with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I have a lot of turbulence in this. This is my beef jerky. You can't have any. Well, maybe a little? No. Maybe just a crumb? Maybe just a sniff? No beef jerky for you. Maybe no. a little. But please? I've been a good doggy. I've been a good doggy. How about a treat? Do you want a treat? I did some treats for you guys because I'm not a terrible mom. Who's a good dog? Oh, Byers is a good dog. Sparta is looking for... Sparta said... Said... Good boy. No, please, please. Pyrus, you dropped half of yours. It's right there. Good girl. Would you like some moonshine? Byers doesn't. You want some moonshine? Sparta's like, that is not what I... Oh, Pyrus likes it. That's my girl. High five. High five. Sits. High five. Good girl. <laughs> what are you yes. doing? Okay. I think we're in the clear. So, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's nothing else that's actually coming up this evening. So, I think all the storms have actually passed. Um, they're, you know, at, at 9 o'clock at night, they usually don't get any more storms come up, and it's actually too cold out now for big storms to fire back up. So that's pretty much that. So we made it. High five. Yay. So we hope we didn't want to over, like, over-dramatize this stuff because this is really, really, really serious. Like, this actually kills people. Um, but yeah. we wanted to kind of show it's a really few. Really freaking scary. Super scary, and we didn't, yeah, it's, it's a real thing. Like, it's it's killed people like not not a good deal like but we did want to show a few things about like 
you know, what we what we do during these scenarios, because on our travels, we've talked to a lot of people who've never been in a tornado, and that's one of the questions they always ask. And so we kind of went over, you know, what we bring into a storm shelter, like what we're looking for, and the, you know, the tornado siren, and how we work with the TV and the apps that we have nowadays with modern technology, everything like that. And so hopefully this is a little bit educational, I suppose, with some cool time lapses. <laughs> yeah. Basically. And now I'm going to go to bed because I am so tired and so stressed out. Yeah, so we're going to go to bed. Uh, tomorrow's actually going to supposed to be another storm day. So uh, if anything actually happens, we'll get back on the camera. Otherwise, we're going to call it quits with this particular video. So uh, like we mentioned earlier in the video, uh, normally we travel around in a DIY van having adventures. Um, so if that's your thing, be sure to subscribe. Till next time. We'll see you later.